So a lot of Kickstarter videos these days pretty much show the same thing. They show clips of founders doing sketching, prototyping, you know, maybe they have prototypes on the wall. They show 3D printing. They show like the different components of the product being put together. And so my question is why? Why do they keep showing these things and why does it seem to work so well for Kickstarter? Is there some reason why when people watch this video and they see the care that people put into the product that it makes them want the product more? I mean, there's something to that, but what is it about that? What is it about seeing people build the product that makes you want to buy the product? And I got a clue into the answer to this question while I was reading My Life in Advertising by Claude C. Hopkins who's pretty much considered one of the best copywriters or people in the advertising industry ever. In my life in advertising, he got an account for Van Camp's pork and beans, canned beans product, and he didn't know how to advertise it, or the founder didn't know how to advertise it, and he talked about how he was advertising it and how it became so successful. He wrote this, Van Camp's pork and beans offered no unique arguments. They were like other pork and beans. When we met in the factory and served a half dozen brands, not a man present could decide which was Van Camp's. But we told facts that no one else ever told. We told of beans grown on special soils. Any good navy beans must be grown there. We told of vine ripened tomatoes, Livingston stone tomatoes. All our competitors used them. We told how we analyzed every lot of beans as every canner must. We told of our steam ovens where beans are baked for hours at 245 degrees. That is a regular canning practice. We told how we boiled beans in soft water to eliminate the lime, which made skins tough. Our rivals did that also. We pictured the beans whole, uncrisped, and mealy. We compared them with home-baked beans, with crisp beans on top and mushy beans below. We told why beans, when baked in home ovens, fermented and were hard to digest and how we baked in sealed containers so no flavor could escape. We told just the same story that any rival could have told, but all others thought the story was too commonplace. Within that, there's this idea of an artisanal product, an artisanal video. And if you're selling a product or marketing it as artisanal, you definitely want to show the components, the care, the way it's being built, and really position your product like that. For Claude Hopkins, he decided to do this because it works. Like, you can sell a product artisanally so long as your competitors don't do it. And even if your competitors do it, such as the case of Kickstarter videos, and even if it is commonplace, it will still work so long as the consumer, it's the first time for them to see your product being positioned in such an artisanal way. A great video that kind of shows this is, is the human technology video that the gun company Beretta made. They just really showed the machining and just like epic product shots of the way their guns are being built. And of course, as more people realize the power of this type of video, they're gonna use it and they're gonna use it for their marketing and it's gonna saturate the marketplace. Like Mass Brothers Chocolate does this so well that now they're kind of being seen as deceptive. And it's being done so much that people are skeptical and they're starting to make fun of this artisanal product type video. And you can see that with the Timmy Brothers water video, where they're just making fun of how artisanal food products are marketed as so artisanal that, that they can do it with water. And this isn't to say like, oh, this is, this is something we should stay away from. I think they did a really good job if you pay attention to the Mass Brothers chocolate marketing or the Timmy Brothers water video marketing. You can learn a lot about, one, I mean, one, it's funny, but two, I think they did a really good job of actually marketing that product in this way. From what we've learned from Claude Hopkins, it's not that you think it's being done so much so that you shouldn't do it. What we learn is that if this is a new industry, and if your competitors aren't doing it, then the easiest low-hanging fruit to market your product is to show how your product is being built and to show the care and all the components that are being put into the product.